Dean of Ship. Uh, this is the Greater Love Missionary Baptist Church on Jensen Drive. Uh, and um, I want to make sure that we thank all of the volunteers. I want to thank particularly UMMC, Tyrone Jones, uh, and uh, Kosha McDavid, Emmanuel Muhammad, um, Hein uh, Salah, which is the pharmacist, and all of the volunteers from the University of Houston. Let's give them a very big hand. They're right over here. We have Javier Samuels, but from the University of Houston, Il Ilhan, Ilhan Gelman, Natalie Cahill, Ariana Self. Is that right, almost? Yes. Let's give them a very big hand. Yes. And we have the North Line Dancers. Uh, I am here at Greater Jerusalem. I would imagine this is in the heart of the North Side. Yes. Uh, Jensen Drive is a very historic neighborhood, and the census tract reflects that it is a neighborhood that has both Hispanics and African Americans. Yes. Uh, that's why I'm here today. I'm not going to mince any words. First of all, I will say that the governor uh, needs to do more by calling uh, the President of the United States, the federal government, uh, so that we can elicit and receive federal resources as it relates to nurses and other equipment. That has been done by Arkansas, Mississippi, and Arizona, Republican governors who have called the federal government and they've been given the national disaster medical teams. That is what we need. Our hospitals are saturated, our nurses are exhausted, not my words. I just came from the Lyndon Baines Johnson Hospital to emphasize that beds are not being tended to. The outside tent area where they desperately need for COVID patients, they cannot open because they have no nurses. So I am insisting uh, that there be that relationship. But I've written to the President of the United States, to Jeff Zentz, who is the head of COVID-19 Task Force. We have spoken today, and they are committing to helping me with Health and Human Services and FEMA to bring resources to those who want the resources. We are trying to work to discern how we get that done, which is to get these resources where needed. But in the meantime, we're doing two things here. We're testing people for COVID-19. Uh, I've got a commitment from the federal government that they will help us to ramp up testing because people, when they don't get vaccinated, uh, then uh, they create a spread. Uh, and uh, it is important to take note of the fact uh, that they create a surge and they create an increase in people that are hospitalized. There are 151,415 cases in the last week of COVID-19 cases in the United States the highest ever. The state of Texas has a 19% 19 uh, 19% infection rate. Last week it was 18. It's now surged to 19%. Where you can feel comfortable is maybe 10% and under. We're at 19%. Dr. Williams, George Williams, uh, who is a medical chief of the ICU at Lyndon Baines Johnson said he expects this to surge, not go down, but to go up. So why am I here at this great church, this historic church? Pastor, how old is the church? It's about, I want to say about close to 100 years. 100 years. That's why I came here. And I want to highlight this church. They're still standing. Let's give them a very big hand. They have gotten grandmothers and great-grandmothers and great-granddads and children who have gone through this church. But the church happens to be a church that serves uh, the wonderful, diverse community. African Americans and Hispanics are living all around in this area. These are the communities that are not getting vaccinated. I am tired of mincing words anymore. I will lower my voice. 25%, which is an outrageous number, are vaccinated. And what is happening is, as doctors are black and Hispanic, because they are not getting vaccinated. So this is a personal cry. It is to get vaccinated because you're gonna wind up infecting someone else, getting that person sick, infecting a loved one. Today I went to a funeral of someone who died of COVID-19 uh, complications. I have gone to funerals over and over of people dying of COVID-19 complications. In Florida, what more do we have to say to be able to tell you that this is a no nonsense, no playing game? And if you're going to play with fire, I believe that it endangers your neighbor, it endangers your family member, it endangers your loved ones. And that's why I wanted to be at this church, and I'm so grateful 
because a church that's been here for 100 years, they have a long legacy. And I want to congratulate them. So far, we have vaccinated 14. We're still here. I've just got on the radio. I'm hoping that we will get some more that will come in. Everywhere I can go, I'm trying to vaccinate. But I've gotten the federal government on my request to help ramp up testing as well. But testing does not keep you from being sick. It does give you the knowledge not to go and infect someone else because you're COVID-19 positive. When the children go back to school, all of our school districts have now stood up and are prepared uh, to stand against and to violate what I think is an unfortunate order by the government of this state. And that is that they cannot have mandatory masks, uh, that they cannot contact trace, or they cannot tell you if one child in your child's class is positive. The Secretary of Education, at my request, has now written a letter to the governor and the commissioner of Ag education and saying that their provisions are in violation of the federal requirements in order to provide for safe, secure uh, uh, position for our children to go back to school. H S H I S D will start on the 23rd. I think Fort Bend starts next week. Other school districts have started this week. And unless we follow the Centers for Disease Control policy to ensure uh, that we make sure that these children are masked, that there is contact tracing if someone is discovered to be infected in the class, six-year-old class, first grade and second grade, these are children. And the one thing about children, they're resilient. And all the parents talking about how difficult it is, I cannot speak for them. They have a right to speak for their children, but I have seen little children wearing masks happily because they do what you encourage them to do. Mm -hmm. They're proud of that mask. Mm -hmm. They show that mask, they're proud. You know what, they understand. My six-year-old grandchildren, they understand the COVID as they call it. They understand the mask is to save their lives but to help their fellow students. Children are more eager to be helpful than anyone else. Right. And if you tell them they're helping everybody, mm -hmm. they are happy about that. And I hear someone saying, oh, because they know little children.